Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. In today's episode of CN Unit Analysis, we will be featuring Imbibitor Lune, the biggest and baddest hyper carry that has graced us uh, in version 1.3. With its absolutely insane multipliers, it is very likely that Imbibitor Lune will top the DPS charts in the foreseeable future. Before we actually get into the analysis, I would just like to show you guys this. By the time of this video is released, Pokey's library will be fully functional and every single one of my CN unit analysis as well as my slides and general resources will be uploaded into this website, right? So all of my previous things, right? Build summaries, relic advice and resources, every single one of my CN unit analysis, which has been classified based on their elements will be uploaded over here. And in Bibitor Lune is no exception, I'll be doing him in this new format. And going forward, all of my CN unit analysis will be hosted on Pokey's library. So the Google Sheets from today will be obsolete. I will be making a separate video fully announcing the release of this website, but for today, we will just be talking about Imbibitor Lune. But with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into today's content. Now, Imbibitor Lune enters Honkai Staryu with one of the biggest damage numbers we have seen from DPS, having a whopping 500% multiplier on the main target as well as 180% on the two adjacent targets. Imbibitor Lune's 3 skill point enhanced attack instantly places him at the absolute highest in terms of damage output. Of course, this comes with a steep price of 3 skill points, so team compositions as well as ability timings in order to manage Imbibitor's skill point consumption, it is an absolute must. Therefore, this analysis will dragon dive into how players can bring out Imbibitor's incredible damage potential as our strongest hyper carry in version 1.3. Talking about Imbibitor Lune's common misconception, the first being that he does not need speed boots. Some of you guys may have noticed by now, but the higher Imbibitor's speed is, the more pressure it is for his entire team to generate enough skill points for him to use. If Imbibitor does not have any speed from either sub stats or main stats, it will be much easier for his supports to keep up with Imbibitor's extremely high skill point consumption. Number 2, Imbibitor needs attack percentage more than damage percentage buffs, since his talents provide a 60% damage buff at maximum stacks, going into 100% at either 1. So supports like Asta, Ting Yun, and Yu Kong, they are all excellent supporters for Imbibitor Lune because their attack percentage buff uptime is really really high. Number 3, Imbibitor's AoE capabilities are not game breaking, since majority of his damage will be on the main target, right? For 3 skill points, his main target will receive 500% multiplier, but his adjacent targets only receives 180%. So this holds true for both his enhanced attacks and his ultimate. So if you guys want to bring Imbibitor to a content where you want to deal equal damage to all enemies, then players definitely need to manage their expectations. Number 4, Imbibitor's action can also cycle between 3 skill points, 0 skill points, or even 1 or 2 skill point based attacks, although that's not really recommended. Uh, players do not need to focus on using his 3 skill point every single turn, and his playstyle is actually much more fluid than you guys might think it is. Now regarding whether Imbibitor should use his 1 skill point and 2 skill points, uh, the general consensus for CM Bros is no. Most of the time, either you stick to 3 skill points or completely stick to 0 skill points. There is no in between because the benefits that you would have gotten from using all 3 skill points at once is much higher than splitting his skill points up into let's say 3 times 1 skill points or 1 times 1 skill point and 1 times 2 skill point. So for that, players should only focus on either 3 skill points or 0 skill points. And the last point is that Imbibitor's extreme multipliers as well as his synergies with all our current supports can see him brute forcing his way through most if not all content Honkai Staryu, even while being off element. So because of this, players who put for Silly and Silver Wolf and in the future a Fu Xuan could theoretically only use these two teams, right? As you guys can see over here, Bronya, Ting Yun, Luo Cha, and Imbibitor, this Luo Cha could be anyone, plus Fu Xuan, Silver Wolf, Sile, and Lynx or QQ over here for a Mono Quantum team. So if you have built these two teams, you honestly could clear every single content that Honkai Staryu has in the game right now, unless they want to introduce more difficult contents where it forces the players to actually be on the right element. Now that being said, Imbibitor might not be as optimal as an on-element DPS carry, but for players wanting to save their resources, then this is a very, very possible thing that you can do. So that is that for Imbibitor's common misconceptions.
Now moving on to his character kit, the first point being Trace Priority. A basic attack will outweigh talent and you will outweigh skill and his ultimate. Now basic is Inhibitor's highest scaling multiplier, hence it has the highest priority. His talent gives tremendous damage percentage, so that's going to be the next best thing. And Inhibitor's skill will precede ultimate as every single enhanced attack will benefit from the crit damage increase, while the ultimate's upgrade doesn't really increase anything but the ultimate's multiplier. And as we know by now, the majority of Inhibitor's damage does come from his 3 skill point enhanced attack. So his ultimate is more or less there just to provide us with the Squama Synchro Sector for us to deal even more enhanced attacks. His ultimate is not the main thing. As for his A2, A4, and A6 trace, Joe Anew above Aqua Rain above Starville. Now, Joe Anew is Inhibitor's A6 trace, and that is his biggest offensive trace, which provides him with additional damage, while Aqua Rain can reduce crowd control probability. And considering that Inhibitor Lunar is a destruction class unit, and even until this point, I'm personally I'm not sure why he's a destruction class unit, uh, his higher taunt value does make this trace a lot more valuable than other hyper carries, right? So if he's going to get hit more, particularly by crowd controls, at least Aqua Rain can mitigate this to some extent. Star Veil is a slight quality of life improvement to Inhibitor's highest energy cost, but it is not as valuable as compared to the other two tracers. But at the end of the day, all of these tracers, you definitely should upgrade them if you're going to be building him as a hyper carry. And that's all for Inhibitor's trace priorities. Now moving on to his special mechanics, and that is his 3 times enhanced basic attack. The screenshot that you guys can see over here, uh, this is an E0 S1 Inhibitor Lunar that I was testing out. It dealt 186,000 damage for one main target and two goldfish. This was Forgotten Horse 6. Uh, and he only had 2.3k attack and 94 crit damage with a Tainwind and Pella buff. Um, this goes to show that even if your Inhibitor Lunar have like absolutely horrendous gears, his damage potential is definitely still there. Right, that is just how strong his multipliers are. So as you guys have seen, this is the single mechanic that allows Inhibitor to output obscene amounts of damage every single turn. Knowing how to make use of his enhancements at the right time, along with his Squama, Sacro, Sanctar, and team building, will be the difference between an Inhibitor dealing 100,000 damage with 3 skill points or 300,000 damage uh, with 3 skill points consistently throughout the battle. Since unless you can clear a battle in a single turn, uh, you do need consistency for Inhibitor to, to achieve his full potential. Now, while the damage numbers for this is extremely high, uh, players need to keep in mind that this ultimately use 3 skill points instead of 1 skill points, unlike any other DPS. So skill point for skill point, Inhibitor Lunae's damage is not completely game-breaking. What makes him game-breaking is how synergistic this 3 times enhancement is when paired with our current supports. With an incredible base multiplier of 500% uh, plus 180% times 2, this number exponentially goes up with the buffs and debuffs from all our other supports, such as damage buff, attack buff, crit buff, uh, energy from Tingyuin, defense down, and rest down. Right? So this 3 skill point enhancement, along with Inhibitor Lunae's talents, results in the perfect catalyst for all our supports to channel their buffs into one massive attack while other DPS will face more issues in trying to combine every single buff from their supports. In Bibito Lunae's nature of being a single, concentrated burst of damage gives rise to a potential new archetype of DPS in the future, something like Assassins. Like any other game, Assassins deal a tremendous amount of damage in a single hit or a single combo, but they need time and setup to execute this attack, in contrast to consistent damage dealers from units such as Marksman or Bruiser classes, but I'm starting to digress. Hunt units are an example of how Assassins work, right? For Sile, for Yan Qing, you set up all of the buffs and debuffs from the rest of the team into one single attack. Uh, most of the time, this is going to be the ultimate because the ultimate has the highest base multiplier. This will create one massive hit that seeks to destroy the target instantly. Inhibitor simply took this to the next level since the catalyst for this, right? Since, like I mentioned just now, the catalyst for all the other assassins like Sile and Yan Qing, it is their ultimates. But for Inhibitor, this catalyst can happen every single turn with his three skill points. So the bottom line, Inhibitor Lune is not broken because his multipliers are extremely high for three skill points because he uses three skill points. What makes Inhibitor Lune like extremely, extremely good is more of how well he synergizes with the supports, right? And, and this current moment, almost every single support can pair well with Inhibitor Lunae as long as he has enough skill points, right? So that is that for Inhibitor Lunae's special mechanic. Now moving on to his idolence, 
Uh, his E1 is a damage percentage increase, right? Changing his Righteous Heart stack from 6 maximum to 10 maximum. So now he can stack up to 100% uh, damage increase. Uh, this helps push his 3 skill point as well as ultimate even further in terms of the damage department. But I wouldn't say it is the most important item. The most important item is actually his item 2. After using his ultimate, Inbibitor Lunate's action is advanced by 100% and gains one extra Squamar Sacro Sancta. Now, this is a game changing item because with this item, the gameplay with Inbibitor Lunate feels much smoother. On top of allowing his ultimate to provide three stacks of Sacro Sancta for a full three skill point attack for free, it also gives us 100% action value advance. You can now do three skill points attack into ultimate into another three skill point attack for the highest damage output from a single unit in Honkai Star Rail. Additionally, if players do not want to use these three skill points consecutively, maybe due to energy issues, this 100% action value advance is still an excellent thing to have because Inbibitor can simply just use his basic attack to generate more skill points for the rest of the team, right? So it can be really, really fluid and E2 is absolutely crucial if players want to invest in Inbibitor Lune uh, even further than E0. His E4 essentially just ensures that the crit damage buff goes beyond the current turn, and this allows for our ultimate's DPS to increase uh, once his turn is over, or allow his next 0 to 2 skill point attack to retain the 3 skill point crit damage buff from the previous turn. So if you do not have this Eidolon, then the buff only lasts for that specific attack. Uh, but with this Eidolon, then the damage will go into his second turn. So if you guys are using Imperial Lunate to do a 3 skill point attack into a basic attack, then at least this basic attack will still gain the crit damage buff from the previous turn. But ultimately, it is not extremely impactful as compared to Eidolon 2. Eidolon 6 is although still not as impactful as Iden 2, but it is an incredible damage buff by the form of imaginary rest penetration, right? Because this is a rest penetration Iden, it is separate multipliers from the attack percentage multipliers or damage percentage multipliers. So this will increase its damage by a very, very large amount, right? Uh, although this is useful, Inbibitor Lunate's damage capabilities is more than enough even at E0. Right. Compare this E6 with, for example, Seal Wolf's E6. Seal Wolf's E6 essentially increases the damage by 100%, but this can face diminishing values of returns because she does gain a lot of damage percentage buff if you're going to be using her as a main DPS, uh, buffing her with all the supports. Whereas for Inhibitor Lunate's E6, this is Rest Penetration. And so far, other than Seal Wolf, no other units in our game right now has this Rest Penetration debuff. In summary, Inbibitor is completely functionable at E0, but E2 gives him an incredible value and one of the best Eidolon tools out of every single limited banner may be the same degree of usefulness as Zero Wolf's E2, which basically halves your EHR requirement. Right? If players are going to invest in Inbibitor Lune, uh, E2, in my opinion, is more than enough. But of course, more Eidolons will definitely push Inbibitor's already incredible damage output even further, especially at E6. Now moving on to relic recommendations, uh, EHR and break effects not going to be applicable for Inhibitor, so we're not going to be talking about them. And what we do need to talk about is his energy requirements. For Inhibitor Lune, since his ultimate is 140 energy, uh, it is much higher than our traditional DPSs. So at this point, some players may think, should we equip Inhibitor with an energy regeneration rope, right? So based on the calculations, this is what I've come up with the three most important energy thresholds to take note of. Right. The first one being if you do not have his signature light cone, which increases his energy regeneration, you can use ER rope to ensure Inhibitor casts his ultimate every three turns. Right. So three skill point attack, three skill point attack, three skill point attack. Uh, with ER rope will give you uh more than 140 energy. Right. Uh, at the expense of of course an attack percentage rope. Right. So you're gonna be losing 43.2% attack. Uh, but you are guaranteed to ultimate every three turns. Or if players are gonna be pulling for a signature light cone, then you can still have a perfect perfect three turn ultimate uh, with this. You, so you no longer need to use an ER rope. Uh, getting his signature light cone is already enough for him to do the perfect three turn out cycle. At this point, I do want to say his signature light cone is two different stacks, right? So the first stack is going to be at 6%, and the second stack is going to be at 12% at S1. Uh, another alternative is combining both ER rope as well as his signature light cone to grant him a 31.4% energy regeneration. So in this situation, Inputer Lune can do a 3 turn ultimate with using 3 skill point attack, no skill point attack, and 3 skill point attack, right? You are, however, missing 3 energy, uh, but this can be achieved as long as you kill a mob. And if you're going to be using Inbibitor Lune as a hyper carry, it is very, very likely that you can kill a mob with him, right? Because of all the adjacent damage and his ultimate and AoE. So across 3 turns, 
if you can kill one mob or at least just get hit once, you can cast ultimate every three turns with just using two three skill points and hunts attack. So that is that for his energy threshold and in summary, Imbibitor's signature light cone at S1 ensures a smooth three turn ultimate using three skill point and hunts attack. Otherwise, you do need to use an ER rope or maybe use Tingling to compensate for this. Now due to Imbibitor's high multipliers and his specialization as a unit that excels at main target plus adjacent targets, killing mobs should be extremely easy with Imbibitor, right? So I did not take this into account for the table above, but a two Two turn ultimate is also possible if you factor in all the mobs that Imbibitor is going to kill, right? So that's definitely possible as well. And lastly, if players do not get Imbibitor's signature light cone, then ER rope would be recommended to maintain a three turn ultimate, which grants better skill point management in the long run of the fight, right? Losing 43.2% attack, although for a single unit, uh, it might seem like quite a bit of a drawback, but since you're going to be pairing Imbibitor with other supports, right? Uh, you're going to be pairing him with Asta, pairing him with Yukong, pairing him with Pella, or even Bronya, all these supports can still buff in Brutal Lunae's attack percentage. But maintaining 3 turn ultimate is way more crucial in that sense, right? So that is the general summary for his energy thresholds. Now moving on to his Relic set recommendations, a Musketeer slash Bandit 2 plus 2 is actually the best set for general usage, even better than 4-piece banditry. 10% imaginary damage and 12% attack are both excellent and they have 100% uptime, right? A large portion of Imbrutal Lunae's kits are focused on damage percentage, right? Because of his 60% damage percentage buff from his trace. Hence, attack percentage buffs for Imbrutal Lunae are generally really, really great. Although this effect does diminish when you pair him up with other supports with attack and damage percentage buffs. Now, moving on to four-piece banditry, uh, this is the highest possible damage that you can achieve with Imbrutal when hitting an enemy that is imprisoned. Now, even if the enemy is not in prison and he loses his 20% crit damage, uh, keep in mind that debuffed enemies, right, any debuffs, right, defense down from Pella or defense down from Silver Wolf, is still offers in 10% crit rate. And on top of this, he does get another 10% imaginary damage. So this is honestly still really, really good, uh, but you do need to make sure that the enemy at least gets debuffed with, with, with the banditry set. Otherwise, 2 plus 2 will give you a better damage output. And lastly, Musketeer of the Wild with 4 piece, it does not really fall that far behind. Um, the good thing about this is that the basic attack percentage damage does benefit in people by quite a bit since majority of this damage does come from the 3 skill points enhanced attack. The speed is slightly reduced redundant as because like I mentioned earlier on, Invisible Lunae really does not need speed, right? Any more speed with Invisible Lunae just places unnecessary pressure for the rest of the team. Unless you are going to be using Invisible Lunae to cycle between 3 skill points and 0 skill points. So for this kind of Invisible Lunae, then yes, speed is going to be a thing. But for most of the time, if you're going to be just focusing on 3 skill point attacks, which is his highest damaging action cycles, then uh, the speed is not going to matter that much. So bottom line, Musketeer plus Benetry is the best for general usage. Uh, moving on to the planetary set, Rutilant Arena really is his best in slot, right? Since majority of his damage is from his enhanced attack, you could run Salsoto or Space Ceiling if you really don't have a very good sub stat even up to this day. Uh, note that for Space Ceiling Station, you do need 120 speed to achieve the full benefit, and Imbibitor does not need speed unless you do the three enhanced attack into basic attack cycling. And lastly, for his main and sub stats, very standard hyper carry setup, right? You focus on crit ratio above all else. And like I mentioned again and again, Imbibitor does not need speed as it places unnecessary pressure for our entire team's skill point generation. ER rope can be considered, right? Once again, refer back to the energy threshold section to determine if you really need an ER rope. So generally speaking, crit damage chest because Imbibitor Lunin does get a lot of crit rate from his tracers and his light cone, if you're gonna be getting his light cone. Attack percentage boots always, attack percentage rope or ER rope, and imaginary damage sphere. Then for subset priority, crit value is going to be the highest, followed by attack percentage, and then maybe a little bit of speed, especially if you're going to be cycling between the basic attacks, and the lowest is going to be break effect slash attack. And that's all for Imbibitor Lunae's Relic recommendations. Now moving on to his light cone recommendations, taking his signature light cone at S1, this is the findings from all other uh, light cones based on his personal DPS output, right? So this is no other supports, but only his personal DPS output. S5 Aeon, which is the Herta Shop light cone, actually has the closest damage percentage compared to the signature one, coming in at 98.3% uh, out of 100%, right? Following up with this is S5 Secret Vow at 92.3%. Uh, this is assuming that uh, you do trigger Secret Vow secondary effect. 
project where Imperial Lunae is lower HP than the target, right? Followed by S1 Unreachable Sight, which is Blade's Light Cone, and then followed by S5 Aeon uh, without Winner's Break at 89.2%, and then under the blue sky, the most Secret Vow, and then Clara's Light Cone in last place at 81.6%. So the bottom line is, S5 Aeon or Herta Shop's Light Cone is the best alternative for players without his signature Light Cone. Why is this the case? It's because like I mentioned again and again, Imbibitor Luning lacks a lot of attack percentage, especially when you factor in he has a lot of damage percentage from his traces. Uh, and if, especially if players are going to be running an ER rope with Imbibitor Luning, since you are no longer running his signature Light Cone, then he really, really needs a lot of attack percentage sources. And Aeon is the perfect alternative to supplement his lacking attack percentage. Now, Secret Vow, while it looks really, really high on paper, it can be hard to trigger since Imbibitor Lunae's damage output is extremely high. Uh, and for most of the times, you do want to make sure that Imbibitor Lunae is uh, at a healthy range, right? You don't really want him to be a low HP like Arlen. So Secret Vow, on paper, it looks really high, but generally speaking, Aeon is going to be a much better alternative. And if you do not have Aeon and you do not have uh, Blades Light Cone, uh, then Under the Blue Sky or even the most can be a better option than Secret Vow. And that's that for his Light Cone recommendations. Now moving on to the last section, which is Imbibitor Lunae's team comps, we will only be discussing his basic team compositions, uh, but a separate and more in-depth Imbibitor Lunae team comp will be on CN Explained Imbibitor Lunae's complete team analysis, where different playstyles ranging from both E0 and e E2 Imbibitor will be explored. Like I mentioned, E2 Imbibitor is an absolutely game-changing idolon and it drastically changes the way that you can play him, so I do want to explore this a little bit more in-depth in a separate video. But this is the generic consensus when it comes to team building for Imbibitor. Uh, Ting Yun, it is the absolute best supporter for Imbibitor as she is the only unit that can enable Imbibitor to use a two-turn ultimate without relying on kills, right? And this massively improves Imbibitor Lunate's skill point management. So after removing one slot for sustain and one slot for Ting Yun, then the remaining slot can honestly be for any supporters, right? Generally speaking, supporters like Asta, Pella, Silver Wolf, any skill point friendly support uh, will be favorable for Imbibitor Lunate. Uh, on the other hand, Bronya and Yu Kong, they are not as skill point friendly, but they can provide Imbibitor tremendous damage output at the expense of a stricter skill point management, uh, on top of, of preferably having their respective key items. So Bronya at E1 and Yu Kong at E6. For the highest possible damage that we will see in Memory of Chaos, expect Bronya and Yu Kong to make a common appearance. Uh, otherwise, for general usage, then more skill point friendly supports such as Asta, Pella, Tinguin will be preferred. Now, at this point, I also do want to point out one last thing, which is the Mono Imaginary Comp. Uh, in Bivita Lune with Welt, Yu Kong, and Luo Cha, right? People have been talking about this. And like I mentioned in my previous video as well, this is unlikely the optimal team composition given Welt and Yu Kong's high skill point demand. But with that being said, Mono Imaginary's performance will drastically improve as long as this team have a lot of items, right? Namely, Imbibitor Lunae's E2, Welt's E2, as well as Yu Kong's E6. An E2 Imbibitor grants one extra skill point since his ultimate gives him three stacks instead of two, as well as 100% action value advance forward, which helps him weave in zero skill point basic attacks to help with the skill point management. E2 Welt provides higher energy regeneration, and pairing this up with Von Weck plus ER Rope, Welt can do a three turn ultimate with just using a skill and two auto attack making him skill point positive. And lastly, E6 Yu Kong is absolutely crucial for Mono Imaginary because now the buffs are no longer tied to a skill, it is now tied to an ultimate. So this really, really reduces the skill point management for Imbibitor Lunae. Uh, one last thing is that Luo Cha, of course, is absolutely crucial since he is the least skill point heavy sustain character. If players want to use Mono Imaginary, I would only advise it if you have a lot of items on them. So at the end of the day, if you're a will, you could run this comp. Uh, but when it comes to most optimal and highest possible damage, I firmly believe that either Bronya or Yu Kong paired up with a Ting Yun and paired up with a sustain is going to give you even more damage. And then moving on, we have a little bit of assemble teams. So this is going to be the most generic team. You're able to easily use three skill point enhanced attack with Imbibitor every single turn, since Pella, Luocha are extremely skill point efficient and Ting just there to provide a lot of buffs while being skill point efficient herself. Another team you could consider running is that if players do not have Ting Yun, you could run Bronya instead. Uh, for this composition, you do need to weave in three skill point and zero skill point enhanced attack for Imbibitor Lunic, right? But still a really viable comp. And last comp, our mono imaginary, I will only really recommend this if you have multiple 
CEO idols. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode's CN unit analysis. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the website, any changes you would like to see. Uh, me and my team really, really worked very hard on this. Shout out to my man, Nicholas, as well as Abdul. Uh, it was an absolute blast working with you guys. Really, really helpful people. But aside from that, if you guys would like to engage in further discussions, feel free to check out my Discord, Pokies Village, where we have a really active community talking about Honkai Star Rail every single day. And if you guys would like to catch my stream, that's going to be twitch.tv slash MrPokey and the schedule will be uploaded into my Discord server. So with that, we have come to the end of today's content and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.